Hong Xu Tran was born in 1814 in a small Guangdong village called Fuyuan Shui. Hong was the youngest of four children and from an early age showed signs of interest in academia. When Hong's family were no longer able to afford his tuition fees, he became a tutor in order to make money and pursue his dream of passing the notoriously difficult civil service examinations. After coming first in his local civil service examination, he made the move to Guangzhou to take on the provincial examinations. While in Guangzhou, Hong overheard evangelical missionaries preaching the good word. Despite receiving translated copies of the Bible, Hong apparently put them away and ignored them. He continued on with his academic career until he reached the near impossible imperial service exams. Now here comes my favorite part. After failing multiple times, Hong suffered a nervous breakdown, which coincidentally enough resulted in him having prophetic vision. In one dream, Hong met God himself and was informed that he was God's son and brother of Jesus Christ. The big man gave Hong a fiery sword and magic seal and instructed him to rid China of demons. After a few years, Hong was able to rally a few of his fellow villagers and began destroying Confucian and Buddhist statues and began preaching a surprisingly well-crafted form of warped Christian proto-communism. We may laugh now at the thought of a Chinese man proclaiming himself to be the second son of God sent on a demon-slaying mission. But this was a time when China was ruled by the then-despised Manchu minority and China was quickly being invaded and divided by the West. Uprisings occurred almost every other week. Hong Xiu Chuan's plan seemed as solid as anyone else's. What's more, Hong successfully ridded Guangxi of bandits. He had a plan, and he was proving himself to be an effective demon slayer. Regardless of whether they believed he was a prophet or not, there was no reason not to follow him. So it's no surprise that in the span of a short few years, Hong amassed an army of tens of thousands. Once united, Hong Xiu Chuan and his so-called god worshippers traveled throughout China, displacing the Manchu Qing leadership in what was the bloodiest rebellion of the 19th century. Not just in China, but in the entire world. To put this in perspective, around 700,000 people were killed during the American Civil War, and during World War I, around 16 million people died. During Hong Xiu Tran's Taiping Rebellion, an estimated 20 million people lost their lives as a result of the fighting. Considering the time that this took place, even today, that number is staggering. It took about 143 times more lives than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Hong Xiu Tran was not playing around. Their holy crusade eventually led them to the then capital of China, Nanjing, where they established the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom with Hong Xiu Tran as their king. Once declaring himself Emperor of China, Hong set about putting into effect his reforms, and a few of them were actually pretty solid ideas. Hong declared that women should no longer practice the binding of feet, a barbaric fashion preference that became almost compulsory under the Qing rule. Hong also declared that land should be evenly shared among the people, free from the control of landlords and the government. Slavery, concubines, arranged marriages, opium smoking, judicial torture, and the worship of false idols were all to be eliminated. So if Hong's crusade was seemingly so successful, and his thoughts on how China should be run were somewhat reasonable, how did he fail? The main reason for the Taiping Kingdom's downfall didn't come from enemy attacks, but came from Hong Xiu Tran himself. Hong's appointed East King, Yang Xiu Qing, also claimed to speak to God, and combined with his network of spies, pushed Hong Xiu Tran to his mental breaking point. Hong ordered a massive culling of Yang and his men, which also led to the purge of many of his own leaders. His paranoia eventually led to his own family more seriously questioning his sanity. This, coupled with the fact that the cities they liberated were not that well protected and did not have adequate leadership, meant that once the Taiping Kingdom was established, it started collapsing under itself. Finally, in 1864, 11 years after capturing China's capital city, Hong Xiu Tran passed away. Some say it was suicide, others, illness. As the kingdom lost its king, any last remnants of hope crumbled. The Qing's forces retook the capital and crushed the rebellion just months after Hong's passing. Needless to say that it was the end of the Taiping Rebellion's crusade, but was it really? The truth is that while the rebellion may have lost and the message may have been delivered differently, much of the Taiping governmental ideology has lived on in China to this very day. Sun Yat-sen, often called the grandfather of modern China, was often quoted as calling himself Hong Xiu Tran II. His writings of the people's three principles echoed many of Hong Xiu Tran's own sentiments regarding how a modern China should be run. From there, both Mao Zedong and Chiang Kai-shek, who led opposing sides of China's civil war, were both heavily influenced and inspired by Sun Yat-sen. As we know, Mao Zedong eventually won the civil war, and Chiang Kai-shek fled to Taiwan and established his own republic. But it can be said that for both countries, the founding, ideology, and implementation of many policies can be directly linked to the legacy of Hong Xiu Tran's Taiping Rebellion. So, there you have it, the demon slaying son of God who somehow set the stage for modern Chinese thinking. If you liked this video and would like to find out more of the bizarreness that is Chinese history, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Or if you'd like to be truly amazing, you can head on over to our Patreon page. Your support can help this channel really grow. At its current rate, this channel can put out a video every two weeks. But with your help, we can speed up that process. So, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I'm... Welcome! See you soon.